Hello everyone, Adam here from Adobe here and today is a Doctor Who episode review. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Invasion, the Patrick Troughton story which has Patrick Troughton, Webber D. Padbury, Fraser Hines, Nicholas Courtney and has the Cybermen. So, without further ado, finally, after the while of the first companions video, I said I was going to do it here at the end, so here we go, I'm going to be reviewing The Invasion. Now, the invasion sort of takes place after the uh, the previous patch of trap story, the mind robber, the TARDIS, sort of come back together again. The Doctor wakes up and realises there is uh, missiles that are um, being fired at him. So they sort of, they sort of go down to Earth and uh, the Doctor, Jamie and Zoe is sort of seeing what, what's been going on. What's this, all this business? Um, there's a disappearing, disappearance of a scientist. Um, I believe the scientist's name is on the back. Uh, no, he isn't. His name's not on the back, but a scientist has gone missing. Um, but this is all to do with a company called International Electrics. Um, have been taking a scientist and used him for, you know, to, for scientific reasons about behind a invasion that is soon to hit the earth. But yes, so I'm probably going to start off by rounding off the cast, all their, you know, contributions and everything. I first like to talk about this character called uh, Vaughan, who's sort of the head of International Electrics, but also has been uh, working with a a sort of controller uh, machine um, to set up an invasion on Earth, a cyber invasion, in fact. And as cliche as he sounds at the beginning, I sort of I still there was still some hate. I think I still felt the hate, love the hate thing near the end when he sort of does help the Doctor to fight off the Cybermen. How I love that sort of arc that in a way it's, um, it sort of become cliche in Doctor Who how a, a villain sort of betrays the uh, someone who wanted to work for that villain. It's sort of been it's sort of been a quintessential part of Doctor Who to be honest and yeah this, for, for, for this story it does seem a bit original and it's quite a, a cool uh, little arc that he goes through, um, but you should have right. And he has an assistant called Packard. Um, Packard? Packard? Yeah. Um, he's like, hello, hey Packard, we're obtain the prisoners. And he's sort of, you know, he's sort of, his eyes are a bit squinty and, you know, all that business. And he, he does act like the upper class um, evil gentleman. I, don't know, I, can, I believe we can see there, is, there he is, right there, next to Patrick Trotton. Um, oh wait, and he's on the front, of course. That bastard. Yeah. <laughs> um, quite, he's, he's a good serviceable villain, he, he, for the eight-part story. So, yeah. Now, I'm going to go on to, I think, an aspect of the story that's there, but I, I think the Doctor, I'm going to go on with the Doctor, Patrick Trump. Patrick Trump, for me, as the Doctor, is fantastic. He's a great actor, he's... Brilliant when he's sort of um, playing a serious scientist, but also an oh my word, Jeffy, we must get out. Kind of, uh, he does. He d basically, what I'm trying to say, he has a great balance with the Doctor from being scared to being vulnerable to being heroic and everything. He he does, and he does. I think he has a lot of aspects of the Doctor that you know that sort of lack. Um, you know, as you know, some Doctors will only have one characteristic, where it's bitchy or just it's pure eccentric, sort of like the Matt Smith. You know. Yeah, that's all cool. And to be a brilliant doctor, you've got to have a great balance of emotion, of em human emotions, but play a bit more alien, a bit more, uh, not played as not as naturally. But it's Patrick Chan is a fantastic doctor. If I was to rank him, he'd be in my top five somewhere. You know, absolutely, he is a fantastic doctor and. Wish that I saw more of him because I don't think I have seen him with Patrick Troughton, but I did see the previous preceding story in my room, and that's one of my favourite Troughton stories. Probably mm, I'd have seen two, but yeah, Patrick Troughton is fantastic, and um, that's undeniable. Um, of course, I love his relationship with Jamie, who are literally brothers in a way. You see them as sort of men in their 40s, but they act like they're in their, like, you know, they act like they've been. Uh, childhood here of bed bodies for life, even though they sort of met at the ages that they are, and I think it's an excellent bond. And Jamie is a fantastic character um, in this. As although I do think um, the female characters is sort of it's sort of where it does lack in compared to the first companions, the my first companion video. 
the, the female companions for the second Doctor, not really my thing. Zoe, uh, smart, I'm guessing, but even that I sort of felt there's not much to her apart from her being smart and, you know, wanting to go out with this mo with this model chick who is obsessed with taking photos, um, to s photograph some Cybermen and go out and, you know, see for themselves what the situation is, but the, the unit folks are like, no, you stay here and we'll keep an eye on you, kids. And, yeah, it's it's not particularly the best for, for female characterization for the story, but whatever, and, and, and considering it's an eight-parter, there's some moments of great action-packed stuff, there's some stuff where the Doctor and gang have to, basically they are, Jamie has to rescue Zoe and the photographer, and they go up onto the roof on and then into the helicopter, that is really, really cool, and yeah, it's some, that's some really cool uh, stuff right there, she's got Jamie, Zoe, the photographer lady, I forgot her name, and um, don't think it's, it's not on <laughs> some characters I know, but, um, I, I know the assistant to the evil, um, the evil guy, but not the, um, e the actual photographer. She's quite fit, though, um, I'll, I'll say that. And she has a little, she has a, um, she eventually, I think, I think she sort of goes with a unit soldier at the end, um, dishy man or something, or oh, some ridiculous. I think, okay. This is quite cheesy, sort of romantic. I know it's not with the Doctor, and that's fair enough, but even then... Ugh. Uh, but yeah, she was okay. She's a great actress, actually. I, I quite liked her acting in this story. Um, if you if you know way more than I do of the story, put it in the comments below. But the first, this is for the first time I've seen the Patrick Troughton with a unit. Unit, of course, are absolutely fantastic in every era of Doctor Who. They always could be great. You know, you have your main three: the Brigadier, Captain John, the Benton, Benton, um, Benton, and uh, Mike Yates. Or well, Mike Yates isn't. I think he's introduced later on in the series, but Benton's there. Um, Sergeant Benton and Brigadier. So Sar that was Sergeant Benton. Quite good. Um, he sort of finds. Uh, the Doctor and Jamie in the end sort of takes them to base, and the Doctor's like, Oh, hello, Brigadier, I haven't seen you since the Web Affair. Let's get on with this case for Sidemen. That, that's, that's all really, really jolly, really, really awesome and great to sort of uh, get them back in there. Um, yeah, there was one bit in the episode, actually, where Zoe breaks a computer. Um, she sort of outsmarts the computer and just blows it up. Um, that's probably one of my favourites, Zoe. It's probably... Of all the Trout stories I've watched, that is the, her definitive awesome scene when she sort of both functions a computer. That's really, really awesome. Um, yeah, Brigadier's great, you know. Well, he's the Brigadier. Um, I think for the Brigadier, I think the best moments are found in the Pertwee. I think Pertwee is the, my favourite Doctor that he interacts with. Uh, he's great with Tom Baker and he's great with Patrick Troughton and he's great, you know, with the future Doctors, Peter and then of course McCoy and I guess Colin and Dimensions in Time. But I think w the Doctor I see the Brigadier with is John Pertwee because of course John Pertwee's Doctor's all being earthbound. But he does work well with Patrick Troughton and, you know, he's quite lucky to work with all the actors and, you know, all the companions and everything. And of course, being um, the Tires for the first time in The Three Doctors, where Patrick Chan does reappear, and you know, that, 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 that's quite awesome um, that he sort of gets to meet him again. Um, that sort of brings him to Spearhead from Space, where he's um, he never seen him before, he, he doesn't know quite the idea of regeneration, sort of gets used to a new regeneration, and that's John Pertwee, and that's the best. But also, um, of course, he will know about it when he turns up Tom Baker, and then he's like, okay, so that's the norm, and you know. But you can't really jump out in that. Yeah, the relationship's fantastic. It's ever-growing, ever-changing, and I absolutely adore it. And I believe the last thing to talk about um, is the Cybermen themselves. What do I think of the Cybermen in this story? Well, they are quite um, smashing. Um, they're great. I think, I believe they would actually be my favourite designs, um, probably, of, of the Cybermen. Although, I, I think it's either the Tenth Planet or the Invasion... Or maybe I'll go so far as to say Earth Shock, but these Cybermen are, are really cool. I like how they um, sort of emerge, break out of the cocoons. Um, I like how they wake them up. That scene when you sort of wake them up, and they, um, I believe they 
one person tried to implant some fear into it or some human emotions and the Cyberman just grows weak and rots into the ground, that's quite cool. But of course episode 6 cliffhanger is very iconic, they come out the sewers, well they've been in the sewers for episode 5, 6, they pop out and walk around St Paul's Cathedral. Um, with that eerie noise, it's got some really eerie sound effects, and that's that's some that's some really really cool stuff. Um, yeah, that was cool, and I love episode eight. I think episode eight is one of the most awesome endings to a classic series story ever. Um, what's pretty is what's been a pretty good story so far. I think episode eight has a very great cliffhanger. You know, no cliffhanger, sorry, cliffhanger. Uh, last episode when Packer, uh, Vaughn, and the Doctor sort of. Help destroy the Cybermen, there's um, Cybermen coming out, unit guns and, you know, chaos, and it's a all-out battle, and the Doctor's all running for the Cybermen, going, like, ah, ah, ah. It's quite iconic when you see the Doctor just running away from it, from, from the explosions and perhaps a trap, and, and I just sort of like that moment, he's sort of on the floor, and the unit soldiers go after the Cybermen, and then the photographer's there just sort of, uh, he's sort of, the Doctor sort of try to, um, touch the, um, He's sort of like, oh, I need to get to it. And he, he sort of has to, oh, touch himself up and, you know, get himself up right. I love that. That was a really awesome scene. Overall, I think it's a really cool story. It's a great 60s invasion story spread out over eight episodes. The pacing could be off, but I, overall, I think uh, the action and the acting is absolutely fantastic. And uh, some characterization fixes would probably need to be made, but otherwise, it's pretty good. The animation, animation for Doctor Who episodes, uh, for me anyway, sometimes they're really cool and sometimes they're not, but these, the animation on this story, it, it's, it's quite good, it sort of reminds me of some of the Flash animated stuff, like Scream to Schalke, um, Sharda in real time, the Colin Baker, well, Paul McGann, Sharda, it's really cool animation and a recommended story, but overall I'd give it a score of 8 out of 10, and I thought I was going to give it Higher, but no, I think I think it's just an eight, really, and uh, it's strange because many of my reviews recently have just been tens, and really this is an eight because I think some characterization compared to sort of the first companions, I think this sort of pales in comparison because I really do like the first com com characters just did a video and why I love the first companions. Um, I'm pretty proud of that video. I probably said that before in another video, but hey, um, but yeah. My next review, which is going to be sometime soon, basically, yes, I am going to be collaborating with YouTubers on some future Doctor episode reviews because I want to do it that way. I really like doing this stuff on my own, so I'm going to be teaming up with Owen Salmons to review the ninth Doctor story, Father's Day. So, I'll see you then! And bye from the Adam the Ultimate Whovian.